work in defining and sharing open educational resources for strengthening community college training grants. So without further ado, I'd like to kick things off to our moderator today, Eugenie Ajia, Workforce Analyst, DOL ETA Office of Workforce Investment, the Division of Strategic Investment. Eugenie, take it away. Thank you, John, and welcome, everyone. Today, you will hear from representatives of the Skills Commons website. Like SCC, the TACT, or Trade Adjustment Assistance Community College and Career Training Grant, had an OER requirement. Um, that's Open Educational Resources. And the Skills Commons team developed the website that the TACT program required grantees to use. DOL funded the Skills Commons website under a cooperative agreement through December 2018, and Merlot at Cal State Long Beach has continued to develop and offer the materials on the site. Skills Commons has seen a phenomenal 4.5 million downloads of materials since its beginnings, with more than half of those downloads occurring, occurring since the pandemic really moved us to online programming. You'll hear more from the Skills Commons team in a moment both about how to find resources that you can use on Skills Commons and how to post materials on Skills Commons if you choose that way of satisfying the OER grant requirements. But first, let me introduce the Skills Commons team. So we have Jerry Hanley, Executive Director, Skills Commons at Cal State Long Beach. Maria Feith, Associate Director, Partnership Development at Cal State Long Beach. And Rick Lemadu. Associate Director, Customer Relations, also Cal State Long Beach. Welcome, Jerry, Maria, and Rick. So first, I'll talk briefly about SEC OER requirements, then pass it to Jerry and his team to explain what OER is and why it's so important, and then to give you a tour and a demonstration of Skills Commons. To further support the capacity building aspect of the SCC grant, grantees will build upon and contribute to the body of OER and continue to create technology-driven innovations in career training and education by licensing all work under CC Attribution 4.0 or CC BY license. The SCC grant OER requirements are found on pages 11 and 70 to 71 of the SCC FOA, and the links on the right-hand side of this slide provide additional information about Creative Commons and DOL's open licensing requirements. If you have any questions about these requirements, please talk to your FPO. In brief, you must license any new content that you create with grant funds or any pre-existing content that you own but have modified using grant funds. Subsequent users can then copy, distribute, transmit, and adapt this work with attribution to you. Note that the requirements for Creative Commons attributions do not apply to proprietary work. In addition, you must post all grant-funded materials as OER, and we encourage you to consider posting them on Skills Commons, though you are not required to post them there. For other ways to meet this requirement, see the links on this slide. For instance, the Share Your Work tab on the Creative Commons site provides a list of at least 15 different platforms for sharing your work. Finally, be sure to include the ETA disclaimer found on page 71 of the FOA to all products produced in whole or in part with grant funds. Again, reach out to your FPO if you have any questions about these requirements. So this slide and the next provide some of the key FOA text on OER requirements, which we offer here for your later reference. So now I'll diverge uh, ver from OER and very quickly mention another requirement, also found on page 11 of the SEC FOA. This requirement involves sharing data on the grant-funded credentials that you develop or deliver in such a way that the data can be accessed openly. FAQ number 21, which we issued in September 2020, provides additional clarification on the requirement to make your credentials and competencies publicly accessible. We'll explain more about this requirement in future TA, but we wanted to bring it to your attention now. So let's go back to the subject of this webinar. First, before developing any new content, we strongly encourage you to search existing OER repositories for material and to leverage that material where appropriate. 
Second, you should decide how you will prepare and post your material per the FOA. Note that because these are grant requirements, it is an allowable use of grant funds to pay grant staff or to hire outside subject matter experts to meet these requirements. Third, be prepared to document for your FPO and the program office how you have met the OER requirements. The easiest way to do this is to send an email to your FPO and the SCC mailbox with a description of how you are meeting the requirements. Finally, the links to the right offer a few examples of promising practices in preparing and posting grant-funded content. Both are products that tax grantees posted on Skills Commons. For instance, the Healthcare Apprenticeship Implementation Toolkit offers a very helpful introductory outline of the materials that the grantee included in that deliverable, in that toolkit. The monitoring tool is a great example of program support material that a round four grantee revised, remixed, and reused from a round one project. Note that if you scroll down the item's description page, you will see a link labeled Skills Commons Material Reused, which brings you to the original work, so a very helpful feature. And with that, I will uh, see if we have any questions. Um, and if not, we can go straight to the Skills Commons presentation. Um, I don't see any in the, uh, in the chat, so why don't we go ahead. Um, Jerry, would you like to take it away? Oh, OK. Thank you so much, Eugenie, and uh, just want to thank the all the uh, Department of Labor staff who've just been amazingly supportive of our work over the many years. And I'd also like to welcome all the Strengthening Community College grantees and um, wish you, uh, th thank you for spending time um, learning a little bit more about Skills Commons. And we are here to help support your success in your projects. Um, I have myself, Jerry Hanley, and uh, two members of my team, Maria Feith and uh, Rick Lamadou, will be speaking today. And feel free to uh, pop some questions in the chat if anything comes along. So what we're going to talk about today is just a quick overview of TAC. Many of you might be familiar with that grant and Skills Commons and Open Education Resources. Uh, and then we're going to say specifically, as Eugenie went through the requirements uh, for the Strengthening Community Colleges grants uh, will say how can Skills Commons really enable you to easily and effectively uh, meet those requirements by leveraging existing OER. Um, as Eugenie talked about uh, the Montana example and the Missouri example of how you can quickly and easily revise and reuse, remix, retain, and redistribute, those are the five R's of open education resources so you can achieve your goals for your grants quickly and, and effectively. And then the other one about making grant-funded products public. How do you go about doing that? And how can you ensure their sustainability for use? And of course, in all these aspects, for strengthening the community colleges, their capabilities to do what? And it's really to enable your students to develop sustainable employment um, and how do you build uh, regional partnerships from the TAC grant. We've done that uh, in a number of ways and there are services that you might find very useful for, from that. We'll highlight key products and of course answer any of your questions. So those who may not be familiar, just remember that TAC, Trade Adjustment Assistance, Community College and Career Training, really looked at how do you align curriculum with industry needs, accelerate the learning strategies with online delivery. And as you might imagine, with COVID, that's become an essential element for our career and technical education program. And how do you really enable that to be, to be effective? Now, what, as Eugenie had, has said, all the materials in the TAC grant also had to be open education resources. And what we just want to highlight right now is why this is so important uh, for uh, as a requirement. And when you look at the $1.9 billion investment that the U.S. Department of Labor um, made in the tax program, you say, how can that investment produce significant return, 
not only for the colleges who receive their funding, but also when other colleges who have similar goals and needs, whether you're teaching welding in Ohio or Indiana or, or um, Wisconsin, if you're able to reuse other people's resources and enable you to achieve and deliver those curriculum faster with this quality um, to achieve your goals, that really can produce significant benefits and, in a sense, get a return on that investment, not just using that investment once, but being able to use it multiple times. And because this content is now online, it's the digital format really makes it easy for people to share those things. So open education resources provide you these opportunities where you, by making it public, uh, by making it available in a, in a library, so having free access. So think about your local public library where anyone can walk in that door and have access to that material. That's something that, that we can help you do. And also, once you have access to it, how do you use it as you wish? By, and that's where the Creative Commons license that Eugenie mentioned too, enables people to reuse, revise, remix, retain, and redistribute the materials. So you can use it for your uh, purposes and customize it for you. So this federal OER requirement is all about not only the Department of Labor getting a better return on their investment, but also for you too as well, for your institution, so you can accelerate the ability of your project to achieve its goals, increase its use by making it freely available for others, and it also helps improve the sustainability. And as was mentioned, taking someone from round materials from round one, someone improves it, makes it better, and now everyone has access to that improved materials that can sustain your CTE programs. So the value of OER, uh, very helpful, particularly um, in today's environment where things are moving online. So when you're looking at the features of OER, the permission to reuse it is defined in the licensing. And so this is where Creative Commons licensing is really helpful, and we're happy to help you, um, and we have tools that can help you add those licenses and all the documentation required by uh, the Department of Labor. And one of the things, um, sometimes people get a little confused about the difference between licensing and copyright. Remember that the authors of your materials retain the copyright of their products. But what the licensing it does, it just publicly declares that people have the right to use it as defined by the license that you select. So you still, in a sense, own it, but you are enabling people to use it. And that's what the Creative Commons license does. Um, and again, we're happy to help, help you and your colleagues really go through the, um, the licensing process so you can be successful. Now, once you make it, you license it available, how do you then make it available for other people to reuse it? And that's where making it available for reuse through an online public library. And, and that's really where Skills Cubbits comes into play is we, we are a public library of Department of Labor funded resources. And what I'm going to do next is just do a little walkthrough. We, we've got some uh, screenshots to show you how Skills Commons works. And uh, so you can really think about how Skills Commons could be a service that enables you to achieve your goals in uh, meeting the Department of Labor requirements, but also enabling your regional partners to take it uh, really to use your resources and to recognize your expertise in delivering those CTE programs in the credentials, whether they're stacked and lattice or whether they're full associate's degrees. So skillscommons.org, the website, free and open for any of you to use at any time. And so when we look at how do you achieve your goals faster, cheaper, and better, and I'll say one of the things as having um, 
supported by a number of grants over the years. Um, doing it faster is always helpful because you're often sometimes, especially early on in the grant, you're a little bit behind schedule, and saving budget is always a good thing. So that, that's what we're here to help you do. So what's in Skills Commons? So here is, just took a few screenshots. If you're looking for a video on surface grinding, uh, that was produced by a past um, a TAC grantee, or if you're in healthcare, and how do you ensure proper glove sterilization procedures, especially when you're looking at COVID, for example, where you won't have to recreate these tools, but you can reuse these in what you're trying to do. Or how about a whole online course about business communication, right? These are all set up, and this particular one is materials organized in a learning management uh, forum, such as Moodle, that you can download that entire course and upload it into your learning management system. Or you might even want to look at individual units for an environmental sciences program on sustainability. And so you can look at how um, you can preview it, click on that link, and you can see what it looks like. And then if you say, boy, we can use that, then you can download it. It'll download onto your computer, and then you can edit it because it has the Creative Commons license, which allows to reuse, revise, and remix, retain the new copy, and redistribute it as you wish. So again, the value of that Creative Commons license and open education resources. So hopefully that just gives you a little sampling of the types of materials. Those are all instructional materials. And we have over 65,000 materials in the Skills Commons library for you to download. And as I mentioned, we have instructional materials, but we also have program support materials. And many of you are working in consortiums. And how would you set up um, articulation agreements between multiple colleges, right? So those type of resources are available for you. And I see Jenny Newby has asked a question around, um, if you're a consortium with multiple colleges, do the individual college have the license or the consortium? And, and Jenny, when you're looking at licensing, it's often the author of the material licenses those, um, th they have the right to define who gets to copy. So that's what copyright is about. Now, when you then license it, then you're able for everyone in your consortium to use that. Now, you also have a choice of whether you want to license it all by the consortium, and that's something we can talk about, but it's often around who the author is, because they have, they're the people who determine the licensing. All right, so program support material. Um, as uh, usually mentioned, we have in Montana a wonderful um, example, a toolkit for setting up an apprenticeship program. There's curriculum, but also how do you develop those apprenticeships within your industry sector? So those type of materials are also available for you. Now, how do you find all these things, right? It's just not a pile of files that, that you have. We've organized it within the North American Industry Classification Scheme. We also have it um, by SOC codes and SIP codes. So there's lots of different ways. And, and the picture, the little diagram there, the, the wheel, uh, the industry wheel, each color represents a different industry sector. And if you click on one, then it expands to have all the details and then then you just roll your cursor over the, uh, the black box there, and you'll be able to find all the materials in that specific area. So this case, this is around in manufacturing, and you have computer and electrical product manufacturing. So click on that, and then you get the 81 materials that are available. You can also browse through a, a more traditional outline or sitemap type layout. And of course, we have search boxes like every um, library would have. So if you typed in manufacturing, then you'd ha 
right here you have over 1,300 materials. And you say, oh, I don't want 1,300 materials. Let me begin to start narrowing it down by different industry sectors. And so that's what's on the left-hand side of your searching is all the industry sectors that manufacturing is. And you just click on one of those, and then you can find the materials in your specific area. Now, Skills Commons also breaks materials down by what type of materials. Are you looking for an online course? Or are you looking just for a module? Or are you looking for a syllabus because you're trying to figure out how you would um, design a new course and look at what someone else has already done? Or it might be you have a program, and what are ways that people have uh, recruited people? Or what if, what if there is some video that might be out there? Okay, So there's a whole set of types of materials that are um, available. And then you can say, all right, I want machining manufacturing. And then I want to look for hybrid courses um, that are available, again, to narrow it down. And then we also have it organized by credential type. Is your program within an associate's degree? Or is this a certificate program, or whatever it might be? And another thing you can filter by is by institution who originally created this. So you might find there's a, a campus. You might be in Wyoming. They might be in Ohio. And they have a similar program. So you might be able to look, let's see how they organize it, because there's a lot of overlap between what we're doing. So all these are ways to help you quickly and efficiently find materials that you can reuse and revise rather than creating it from scratch from the beginning there. And I'll, I'll say, I'll give a heads up here. And if you have any question, we have 1-800-RICK-LUMADU. Rick is our master librarian. He knows the collection really well. He knows how to find things. And he's very good in helping you being able to get the resources and use it. How do you add the licensing, all those type of things to really make it easy for you to do. And once you narrow it down, you click on the, uh, the title. And I'm just giving you an example here of how do you install fittings on water supply lines, right? And you know, normally, that would be in a hands-on you know, um, you know, environment, showing people how to do it. But now that you're in COVID, or you want to do some flipping the classroom to help the students learn more about this before they come into your lab, well, you click on this, and I just put the red box around. Here's a, a PDF. And now I'll just show you an example of a few pages in this PDF of here's how do you install fittings in water supply lines. And so it shows you step by step, how do you have to go about doing this. Now, being able to have these resources that you don't have to recreate is, can save you, again, time. And these are all free for you to use. So it's no cost to use it. And it's free for you to then go in and edit it so you can use it for your particular program. So freedom of cost and freedom for you to revise it and customize it for your needs. So with that, let me just, I'm going to pass it over to Rick right now, who can just share some of his comments about uh, the su support services that, that we can provide you to help you reuse, revise, and remix, retain, and redistribute, and as well as supporting you on uh, achieving the licensing and, and other aspects to it well. So Rick, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, hi, everyone. Just wanted to make you aware and just kind of assure you about this task that you guys are, um, you know, have taken on as, a, as projects under the Strengthening Community College grant. Um, we've done a lot of work with, um, as you can see, with the uh, TAC program and DOL. And as a result of that, we were able to develop the, a set of FAQs, frequently asked questions, around you know, just what Jerry was showing you, how to download material. Well, if this is a different format, it's not in a PDF or a Word doc, what do we do? How do we download that? So I would encourage you, if you're looking for material to download from Skills Commons and you see a file that looks a little, oh, I'm not sure about that, 
check out the FAQs in our support center, and um, it will provide you, I would think, probably with 99.9% .9 of the questions, uh, you know, with answers to those questions about how to, to view a file. For example, if it's an LMS export and you're in Blackboard and the, the original file in, in uh, Skills Commons is in Canvas or vice versa, um, we have ways to help you with that. Um, if there's in a zip file and you want to look in a folder, how do you do that? We got he uh, helps on that as well, and you can see about the SCORM packaging and storylines and things as well. And um, but if you have a, a, another question that's not you know that's not answered there, um, please don't hesitate to ask and to reach out to us at the support at Skills Commons, and, and we'll get the get an answer for you. Um, and the next slide here, just around revising and, and making over some of the content in Skills Commons, if you're interested in doing that and you want to learn about, you know, reusing it and, and creating your derivative of, 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 of material in Skills Commons, we've got lots of uh, great examples in Skills Commons, and here's one from, um, you know, a grant project in Ohio at Northwest State Community College using um, a Word document, and then they just re basically rebranded it and put on their own CC BY license. And then, um, and then it was also this one as a content makeover, so a little bit more um, uh, down, you know, more interactivity, not just, you know, just a simple Word document, but this is some interactivity with um, a document and creating um, uh, clicks through and things like that and making, just kind of making it more interactive and a little bit a better user experience. And this was more around a brochure and things like that that um, this grant project used. We can also help you with uh, the learning management system makeovers and things like that. So um, don't hesitate to reach out and ask us. We're here to help you, as Jerry has already said, to help you be successful in your project. Um, with that, Jerry, I'll turn it back to you. Great. Thank, thank you, Rick. And, and again, you know, the, the idea around the, the makeovers, right, is how do you take something you already have and make it to what you want? That's kind of the key aspect of the value of OER, again, is being able to not have to start from scratch, but if you can save 25, 50% of your time, then you have that extra time to do all the other implementation that, that's going to be important for you. So, so thank you, Rick. Now, one of the other um, services that, that we also provide we have something called Skills Commons Plus, um, where we have partnered with Odigia to create a competency-based education platform that brings in the Skills Commons OER and allows you to streamline the instructional experience. So rather than going from a file to a file and opening this or going to different parts, it kind of integrates all that learning experience for that student. It integrates formative and summative assessments. It provides you dashboards on student performance, so you can really look at and evaluate the development of their competencies, and it integrates into your LMS. And, and we're, we're beginning to work with Foresight Community Colleges in North Carolina um, in implementing, um, you know, Odigia with some Skills Commons resources to provide that. So if that's something that's important, for you folks, you know, we, we're happy to talk with you about that as well. Now, um, once you're, we're, we're able to, uh, for you to create those resources and license them, them as OER, then what are things that you, uh, that you need to do to make them publicly available? And uh, there's lots of ways to do it, and we, we would like to recommend that Skills Commons can be a very cost-effective way for you to achieve that, that um, grant requirement. And, and one of the things about it um, is it really does make it publicly available. What I'm showing you here, this, this is all data from our home page on Merlot. And, um, and since Skills Commons started, we've had almost three, uh, four million downloads of materials and we're, re we're reaching almost 7 million um, view combination of views and downloads of, the, of these resources. So um, the, if, if it's put in Skills Commons, it's going to get viewed. You're going to – and the other aspect is because it's open education resources, literally every country around the world 
as the access skills commons content, all right? And uh, obviously you can see the U.S. is, is the, the highest users, but you, you know, you're seeing people around the world are, are using it. So if you're looking at building institutional reputation and visibility of your programs, Skills Commons can help you achieve those goals as well. So looking at Skills Commons as your public library, you upload it and we showcase it. And, uh, and the, the way we do this, right, you, we, we have a freemium model, right, that there are free services that, that we provide. You can create an account for free, and people are free to use all the open education resources. And the premium part of the freemium things is that we, we have a number of fee-based products and services. We can help you in the organization storage and showcasing your project. We can provide technical assistance in licensing, quality assurance, um, and, and I'll explain some of those. If you need any help in uploading, uh, we have single uploading and batch uploading. If you have a lot to do, employer partnership develop. So, so this is our freemium service um, that, that we're really happy to uh, help you achieve. Uh, in this, and um, and and you know we are uh, a an educational institution providing these services. Okay, so and and we will provide I'll call it <coughs> preferred pricing for our <coughs> friends of the <laughs> Department of Labor. Um, so uh, and and what these costs are going to be <coughs> realistically are going to be determined by what the services that, that you need. So we're really happy to have a conversation with you about what your needs might be and come, with, come up with a, an affordable um, service for you. And what are those things? Um, <clears throat> working through if you're going to use Skills Commons as your um, strategy to make it publicly available and disseminate it. Um, we have a whole process of how do you do it? We set up an account. We help you prepare your materials uh, for uploading. And this is like, you know, if you're moving uh, from one house to another, thinking about how do you package things up so when you get it to the other place, it's really easy for, for you to use it once you're back there. So once we help you prepare, how do you contribute it? If you need to edit it, change it, we can help you with all those things and really enable its dissemination. So we have that process all worked out. And we supported over 700 community colleges in the TACT grant in doing this on over 256 programs over um, a five-year period that we had there. Um, in preparing the uploading, ensuring that um, your WCAG 2.0 AA standard on accessibility, um, about Creative Commons licensing, packaging for learning management, out of learning management systems. We have tools, and, and Rick mentioned that already, and also around quality assurance. So, um, so we can help you do that. And we have tools to make it easy for you to build uh, the Creative Commons attribution um, tool there. and on uploading, as I mentioned, singles or batches, um, and whether it's learning materials or program support, we have guide user guides to help you do that. And again, these are freely available for you to use. In our support center, again, Rick had mentioned FAQs, guidelines, handbooks, videos, all these things um, that we had to produce for all the tax grantees, and since there's so many similar requirements for the strengthening community colleges, many of these are very useful for you too as well. And so here are some examples of pages about meeting accessibility requirements. And, we, and we've actually developed an easy to use checklist on accessibility requirements that we built with CAST, which is a national organization uh, uh, supporting accessibility. And then if you're looking for quality of online materials, we work with many of the organizations that you might be familiar with here. And now what I'm going to do is pass it over to Maria, who will talk not only about how we can function as a library 
um, which I've talked about already and how you can reuse it, but what are all the additional services that we can help you in making your project a success? So Maria, pass off to you. Thanks, Jerry. Some of you may already know that Jerry has been at this work for literally decades. In fact, this morning in a meeting, he mentioned that he wrote a paper regarding OER um, in 1980. So he's been thinking about this and doing this work for a very long time. And much of the work that, that Skills Commons, the premise around Skills Commons is based upon the philosophy that Jerry and colleagues from um, the OER frontier have really um, spent some time refining. Bill Commons was designed as a community service tool, and we've kept that design intact by um, providing basic content management services that are affordable. And we give, as Jerry mentioned, uh, federal projects preferred pricing to those basic services to help ensure that content is easily found and able to be revised and reused by many. And your IT department is going to love the idea of not needing to purchase more servers to or cloud space to house all of this fantastic content that your project is developing. We also offer service tiers, such as customized portals that are really well suited for state level workforce development initiatives. And many of you are working within uh, projects that uh, include um, uh, schools from across your state or potentially even multiple states. And so um, being able to create something that will um, provide bridges between employers and education is critical. Um, we can help you fast track your project success because we have been there. We know that those challenge points are there. And we also get the, the clock is ticking. Yeah, we've got um, service tiers that include professional development and TA for instructional designers and instructors. We've got uh, curation oversight using content from Skills Commons, which is the world's largest collection of workforce development OER, as well as partnership development strategies and implementation leading to those long-term effective relationships between education and industry, which is not always an easy thing to sustain. We know that. We have also developed um, a series of courses called we call Jumpstart to Successful Instruction. And this one began as a course designed to help industry subject matter experts acclimate more quickly and effectively to classroom teaching. So uh, we've all probably seen that experience where we bring an adjunct in, they know their content beautifully, but they've never taught it before. And so they struggle when they get into the classroom, and as a result, retention isn't always as strong as we would like to see it. This course helps to jumpstart those skills early and get them in a, in a place where they can be effective more quickly. We, since that time, we've developed three full courses, one for higher ed settings and one for CT, which is also uh, high school appropriate, and one for industry trainers. And each course has three sections, and each section holds 10 to 13 interactive models. And those modules, those modules include self-checks and reviews, and they each take about, on the average, um, 17 minutes to complete. So it's not a huge time commitment. You can deliver these Jumpstart courses from our site, or you can download and customize them as some of our clients are doing with good success right now. So let me go to the next slide. Thanks. By helping you affordably and quickly meet content management requirements via a project shelf space and still common, so that's what we would do. We would create this space for you to be able to upload, and that, that kind of describes what our base service would allow. Um, we feel we're doing our part to sustain DOL's return on that tax investment. And in doing so, we help projects like yours sustain that OER as well. So from faculty support and customized portals that allow industry and education to create doorways into these curated uh, collections, to partnership development, and tools to assist in teaching and learning online, Skills Commons offers you that expertise and the resources to help projects be successful.
here's a here's a good example. We've been we've worked we've done a lot of work with Ohio, and I know someone is here from uh, Ohio. A couple of people are here from Ohio today, and we are always impressed with the work that that comes out of Ohio. The OMA, Ohio Manufacturing Association, has a portal that we have created for them, and uh, the the association members customize the collection, and they. Uh, these collections have been curated by industry experts out of Ohio. They're, the uh, portal is branded so that it has that OMA feel to it, and uh, analytics are used for uh, continuous improvement efforts. So um, this is a, a potential um, design that can be used at the state level. If you can imagine uh, advanced manufacturing a library that all manufacturers and educators that are in this business can access and easily find what they need um, would be a blessing. And so um, Jerry is going to uh, talk with you just a little bit more now about uh, the online uh, teaching and learning uh, pieces that we have put together. We have a sizable collection, and the, thanks to the pandemic, I don't know. That's probably not the blessing, but um, but good things have come from the pandemic, and that this is one of them. Uh, Jerry, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Jerry, are you muted? There we go. Thank you. Yep, uh, I was muted. So um, so thank you, Maria, and and everyone just. Those resources, I'll say particularly the jumpstart that helps your industry experts become more effective at teaching your students so they can transfer that expertise and get those students engaged effectively so they have um, you know, a better chance for retention, completion of their certificate, um, get or be getting better jobs, and getting higher pay because they're more qualified. All those are critical metrics that the Department of Labor measures there. So by looking at these tools that you can bring into your program, without all this effort, um, by being able to reuse and revise it is really helpful. Now, what I'm showing you here, this is another um, example of how we've used templates to create websites that help CTE programs quickly transition when they had to go from hands-on to online and, um, and bringing all types of materials. And again, this is just a quick, you know, screenshot. Um, uh, and and you, if you get the PowerPoint, you can click on it and then you can go see these things. So we talked to various um, CTE programs, so, so like the Technical Colleges System of Georgia and um, because I've you know worked in Georgia for many years, and they said, Jerry, you know, where you know, is there a way that you can help us just get some of these online resources available? About how do I teach online, and how do I help my students learn online? So we pulled together open education resources, and I'll give one example that came from the California Community Colleges. They built little tutorials to help the students be prepared for them to be successfully learning online. How do I manage my time? What's the technology that I really need to have? So all these short videos designed for students, and they have another one for teachers. And where do I get access to the career and technical information? We create a little website to find that stuff. So, so these are tools that if you would like to as well, we know how to do these cost effectively. Um, and and as you can see, brand it for your institution or your system, however you would like that to occur. So in conclusion, we're coming down to the end here is that strengthening your capabilities is around to achieve the, the uh, grant requirements and our the open repository, like where do you store your stuff to make sure it's publicly available and when you do it in Skills Commons, every material stored in Merlot has a metric of use that's automatically generated. So you can take a look at are people using it and use those metrics in your reports. Um, it also helps us scale. 
one of the challenges often when you're working in consortium, and even though you might be coordinated at a kind of a top level, sometimes the faculty don't always connect with one another across the different institutions. By having a shared library, that's a place where they can look at each other's materials and then create derivative works for themselves. So with those services that we have, helping you enable to achieve your goals at a faster speed and less expensive for your institution, and because materials have been developed already and tested and developed, and if you remember, all the materials in the TAC grant were built in partnership with industry already, that you can reuse those and, and build in those workforce alignment materials uh, into your, um, and take advantage of it for building your quality into your programs. So with that, um, we've uh, uh, finished up our overview, and, and, and I realize this is probably more like um, window shopping before you do your real shopping, right? You just get to see what's out there. And, uh, and we were happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with each of you around what we do and understanding it, how it aligns with your needs. Um, people who may know me, I, I, uh, I have a motto, which is give a gift and not a burden. And, and what that really means is that we, in order to know what will be really valuable to you in helping you be successful in your grant, we have to understand what you need so then we can really package these resources and services um, that will help you be successful. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, pass it back to uh, Eugenie and um, for any final comments and also happy to answer any questions. If you just want to pop your questions in the chat, we'll be a ping a, uh, pay attention to that and be able to respond. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you so much for providing such a wealth of information on OER and on Skills Commons. Um, and yeah, I don't see, are there any questions? Um, I don't see any in the chat, but please um, feel free to put them there. Or John, I don't know, I guess we can't, the speakers, uh, sorry, attendees can't unmute. But um, please feel free to put a question in the chat. Um, Unless you're dialed in, I guess, then you could um, yes, ask you your question. Dial in. If you're dialed in right now and you'd like to ask a question live, you just have to press star six to unmute your line. It's only if you're dialed in. Otherwise, you just have to enter your, your question in the chat. Mm, OK. Thank you for that uh, clarification. So yes, if anybody would like to ask a question, um, but you know, always uh, feel free to reach out to your SPO to the uh, program office, and then you know we can also, and of course, the Skills Commons um, uh, folks directly, and we can also put you in touch with them. Um, I will say it's been such a pleasure um, over the years under TACT working with the Skills Commons team, um, and we just really appreciate um, the time that they took today to. Um, you know, illustrate some of these key OER principles um, and, you know, sort of what it really does, can mean in practice. Um, so I think uh, with that, not seeing any questions, um, again, I just want to extend a, a very big thank you to Jerry, Maria, and Rick for this, uh, for your time and for all this information. And um, also a very big thank you to all the attendees. Um, and we wish you a, a, a good afternoon and a very, very happy holiday season. So thank you so much. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.